Hey there, I'm Sophie and today I'm going to show you how you can make these popular framed letters that you've seen done in Canva, but this time I will show you how to do it in Affinity quick and easily. So let's dive straight into the computer and I will show you how. So to get started, let's open up a new page as we have done here. And um, one of the things I love about Affinity is that you have access to Pixabay and Pexels stock footage files of all the wonderful photos around the world. So to get here, if it's not already in your panels, which should be on the right hand side next to color and transform, it should say stock. If it doesn't, like it doesn't on mine, uh, sorry, window, and then go down to stock. Now it will remember the last image that you searched for. So in this case, I have been doing the Kingfisher. So we are back to the Kingfishers. Now what I look for is a clean image that doesn't have too much movement, doesn't have a lot of background. And this will be easier because I want to obviously extract the main object from the image at some point to make it pop. So I'm gonna go with this one by George and just click and drag it onto my page. Now you can see how big this image is because that is the quality of these images. So let's just exit out of the stock footage file. Thank you, photo by George. And let's zoom out so we can see a little bit more of what's going on here. So command minus minus. If we click the V, which is the move tool, we'll be able to see a little bit more command minus minus minus. You can see how big this image, this image is in contrast to the actual page that we've got open. So let's resize it. And to be able to do that, you just click and hold the corners. Now you don't have to press shift in this instance. If you were to press shift, you would change the dimensions of the original image, but just by letting go of shift, it will go back to its original dimensions. So let's just reposition it a little bit. So it looks like that. And let's zoom back into the size of the image that we want. So if you want it to fit to screen, then it's command zero. So let's leave it like that. Now I'm gonna to toggle off the visibility of this layer just to make my life a bit easier whilst I bring in my text. So let's click off the little toggle button here and we can no longer see the image. So let's bring in our text. To be able to do that, you literally go to this little artistic text tool which is T on your keyboard. So by just clicking that, you'll be able to see the little A that comes up. Now this means it's active. So to let's draw on our first letter. So if you click and drag, here you can see by the pixels is the size of that letter. So let's just keep it to this one for now. And I'm gonna make it individual letters. So you just type one letter, then literally just hover a little bit further down. Next letter, hover a bit further down next letter and hover a bit further down and then next letter. So don't worry too much about the fact that they're all different sizes. I will show you how to do that now. So let's go back to our move tool, which is v, uh, which is um, escape because otherwise you'll type V and go up to the little move tool at the top. Now you can select these individually by clicking and pressing shift. So click and shift, click and shift, click and shift. And if you want all of these to be the same size, then what we're gonna do is just go up to the top toolbar and here you can see font size. Now I know that I want these at about 742, give or take, press enter. And then I also want to change the font. Now with all these selected, we can go over to font, font family. And I think I want to select one called Carters, 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 here. Now I like this font because it's bold, it's easy to see the image inside of the letters, which is what the plan is. So let's go and start arranging them. So by clicking away, you can click the letter individually that you want to move and we can start to arrange them in the format that we want. So let's do that one here and maybe that one, let's put it there so it's in line with the eye. Now it's not really where I want, so what we want to do is just again either click from the outside in and drag over your image over your letters, and then we can kind of rearrange them a little bit more. So that is in the middle. Let's get it. There we go. Mm, yeah, there. Okay, fantastic. Let me just zoom out a little bit so we can see exactly what's going on here. 
So the next step is to bring back the image. So let's toggle the visibility back on and you can do this in the layers panel. Now this is where I start to figure out the composition of how I want the Kingfisher to sit inside my letters. So let's have a quick think and look here. Just click and drag to move it. And I think I want him like that. Yes. I think that's how I want him. Okay, so now with that done, what we're gonna do is quickly now go over to our layers panel. And because there are four letters, I want the image to be dupli duplicated four times. So let's, but also keeping this original layer. So there should be five images in total. So let's get going with that. So in your layers panel with the image selected, we're gonna do Command J, Command J, Command J, and Command J. And now we have five of the same image and they're all stacked on top of each other. So to put these into the letters themselves is the easiest thing in the world. All we're gonna do is select the first image and drag it on top of the layer or the letter that you want it to go inside of. And it will look like the letter completely disappears. But if you take a look at the panel itself, you can actually see that the letter now has an image in it and it's not black like the others. So let's go ahead and drag the others on top and you'll see that the letters start to disappear and I'll show you why that is. And if you see the bottom layer, which is this one, if we were to toggle that off, you can now see that the letters have now got the image inside it. But what I want to do is create this 3D image. So I also want to bring the bird to the front and how we do that is by this last layer. So let's toggle the visibility on again and have it selected. Okay, so now what I want to do is remove the bird from the background with the branch. So how we do that is we go to our selection tool, which is W, I believe, on our keyboard. Is it W? Yes, W on our keyboard. And here you can see the big, big brush. So to change that size, you just click your brackets tool and you can change the size to go up or down. It's like the square bracket as well, by the way. So let's get started. All you have to do is click and drag, always making sure that the image layer is selected. And we're just gonna click and drag it. And here, because it's a little bit big, I want to get quite accurate with my branch and across here. And let's just zoom in a little bit. Don't forget that the images are actually pixels. So if you wanna get super, super precise, you can zoom in quite a lot. And here, you can then go into the proper nitty gritty bits of the image. So for example, here, I really want to get the edges done. If I bring the, bra the, the, tool, the brush tool down a little bit, you can really start to get into those corners of the image and make sure you're not getting anything that you want cut off as well. So there's a bit down here, like all along here is a little underbeak and these feathery bits here. Now this is obviously going into a little bit more detail, but I do like the thought of if you're gonna do something, do it right and put your best foot forward. Right, so let's just zoom out again, make sure that everything is selected that I wanted. So yeah, so a little thing here that I want to cut out is the blue from inside this bit here. So we're zooming in again, zooming in again. It feels like you're underwater sometimes, I have to say. So let's just make my brush tool slightly smaller. Click this tool at the top, see how the mode has got cut in, cut out. Those are the ones that you can flip between if you don't want something part of the image. Okay, the tail's pretty cool. All right, so now we've done that which I think is so fast. What we're going to do is, because it's all selected, and we've got our layer file, uh, layer of the image still selected, we're gonna hit Command J. And this now brings out the image out of the background. So let's just toggle off the visibility on that. And there we have it. So now clicking the object, which is what we've cut out, so the bird that we've cut out, we're gonna Command D to deselect. And we're gonna have a little play around of what we can cut out to make it look a little bit more like it's half in the letters, half out of the letters. So 
let's go and mask this you don't need to ultimately this last layer now you could in theory delete but i like to keep it just to have it as a backup just in case something goes wrong and i'm not not sure what entirely happens so let's go and do some masking which is where the magic happens so click on the image the 3d one the one that's just made it 3d and we're going to go down to the bottom and there's the square with the red round dot in the center click that and this is now your mask so if you look to down here where the colors are on the left hand side you should have white and you should have black now if you click x you move these around if these are a different color you click d and it will reset them back so black imagine is cutting something out and white is painting something back in so with that in mind let's go to our brush tool so b on our keyboard and always make sure that you've got the mask selected not nothing not the actual bird itself but your mask if you're not sure which one you've selected if you just click the little drop down you can see here which one you will have selected so let's select the mask okay so let's have a look i'm now on the black so it's going to cut out bits that i don't want and how i want this to go down is i want it to still be a part of like the 3d but i also want it to be inside the actual letters itself so let me bring my bracket tool in so I can bring my brush down and what I want to do is cut this bird out of this G here so I'm gonna click because it's in black it's gonna paint out the image itself like that and what I also want to do is cut out this bit of branch that is part of this N here because it will also give a little bit of extra pizzazz now see what I just did here let me zoom in for you I cut a bit of his tail out so to undo that you just click x again and you can see here that i can paint it back in as i could paint back in this branch if i wanted to so i just want to paint back in his tail like so and then we're going to zoom out command minus minus and i think i also want to cut out this branch here so let's go back to x bring the back the black to the front and i'm going to do that as well because i just think it looks better so what else what else what else this little bit here i think maybe we could cut that out so let's just cut that out yeah i think that looks good as well and that's basically what you do and then you can make it bigger or smaller and you can change the dimensions if you wanted to do that you would just back, go back up to your move tool and what we do is we click and drag over the whole image and make sure i didn't do it for some reason click and drag over the whole image and it will select as you can see here all the images minus the one that you can't see so if you wanted to resize it you'd need to go to the edge of the bounding box click shift to make sure that it keeps its dimensions and you could change the size of that actual image now say for example you've now decided that you want to change the actual image itself like where it actually sits and how big it actually is which is super super easy so by doing if you wanted to do that you just go into each of the individual layers like so so we're just going to toggle them down so we can see the actual image we're going to press click and then we're going to press command because i want to select the individual images within each one and then with that in mind we can then scrape it down remember to press shift and you can change the size now let's move it up a bit let's say you wanted it here let's say here you want it in the middle and let go now as you can see let me just zoom in for you as you can see because of the old image we've got with the mask it's cut out this section here but that's really easy to restore because it is a mask so let's go back to our brush tool and let's click x to make sure that we're painting back in and here you can see that we can paint back in some of the parts of the image like so so just take note that obviously at the bottom here the black has come in because that's where the photos sort of bounding end of the photo is so just take that into consideration when you do do this move but let's do it let's do let's move it down again just to for for sake of argument um 
cool go to our move tool and then let's just shuffle it down a little bit more to there and then let go so let me zoom in again so you can see so that's not really affected any part of it, it actually looks really good i think uh oh there's a little bit over here so if you go to your mask go to your brush and here you can see that little faint line let's just x to bring in the cutout and that is basically how you make your framed letters interesting and dynamic so as you can see this is actually so easy to do and once you master the mask and your ability to move the image around to wherever you want you can make the image do whatever you want put it behind the text put it in front of the text make it jump out at you um, but, but maybe listen if you want a challenge try doing a different bird try doing another animal that you love a uh, pro tip would be to center the t the letters as best you can and make them quite big and then just think about the composition because the composition will help you when you start doing the mask but affinity is such a great program i love it because you only have to pay for it once and i think you have so much room to grow and learn your skill set and your tools and i just think it's pretty amazing so if you liked this video and you found it helpful then please 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 like and subscribe if you have any questions drop them in the comments i will always reply and as always go beyond and create within and i will see you in the next one